So do you think we can make a really great cheese puff? <laughs> there you go, there you go. Oh. Yeah. You are about to taste the first ever Chunkies. This is a cheese puff, one of the more wildly addictive snack foods out there. But have you ever considered making one? That's what we're gonna do, but we're gonna try it with different kinds of cheeses and then we're gonna pair them with wine. And hopefully, they'll be as addictive as these. I'd be amazed to make a snack that I've been eating obsessively since I was 14 years old. We have to analyze them. Yeah. This seems like there's a category that kind of look ununiform, unpredictable shape. Right. And a little bit more dense, right? The texture is perfect. It's movie popcorn butter. Right yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the tanginess of the cheese, I think that's the lactic acid that we're reading in the ingredients. And then the second category is sort of, they're fluffier, but more uniform. They're more like cylinders. That's really light and fluffy. It's kind of scary. This one reminds me most of styrofoam. Yes. Like really tasty styrofoam. Why don't we come up with our own name for these cheese-like puffs? I think we know what that name is. I think we've been sitting on this idea for five years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so it's only now that we can enact it. So when we make our chunkies, <laughs> it rolls off the tongue. See, so the good. second you say chunkies, I know exactly what you mean. You it's mean a cheese puff that would be delectable, and you just want to like lick maybe, it off your hand. Maybe it has a little bit of weight. <laughs> We're not guaranteed this kind of levity. So what's the first logical step we have to take? We have to figure out how to make the form that the cheese will go onto. Cornmeal. We know cornmeal's in it. Well, mm -hmm. we have to. Yeah, we have to make the puff itself. And we're presuming. Uh, we have, without looking, we're presuming that these have some starch in them, right? I was gonna uh, try experimenting with uh, like just a simple starch uh, a nugget and then deep frying that and seeing how that expands. Like a shrimp chip. A shrimp chip? Or yeah, that's a right. Or puppy <laughs> that's overcooked. Yeah. And then the next stage is the cheese part. The coating. The coating. So we have to figure out how to get the moisture out of the cheese and then how to particulate it so it becomes uh, like dust and then how to get that dust to stick. Do you know, you know those like uh, those dust collectors for like your shop dust collection system? Mm -hmm. The whole idea is that when you pull the air into the trash can, the dust comes from your tool or whatever, you know, your planer or your sander. Mm -hmm. And because it comes in on the side of the trash can, it swirls around the trash can and actually precipitates out of the air. You'd be able to use a, a vacuum cleaner to, to provide the suction, but instead of having all the dust and, and cheese poofs go into the vacuum cleaner and then have to fish them out of the bag, they would collect in that cyclone container. Right, so it would be like an efficient system. There'd be no like wasting dust. All right, cool, let's make a cheese dust cyclone. All right, should we go to the cheese store? Yeah, yeah let's buy go. some cheese. Yeah. Gentlemen, how are you? How's good, it going? Good. good, good. What's up? What can I do for you? So we want to take cheese, dehydrate it to make cheese dust, and then distribute it equally on this uh, on hmm. these puffs that we're going to make. A creamier cheese, the milk fat's going to be way too high, and it won't get to the texture I think you need it to get to. Right. But right. for some kind of drier, saltier, a bit more complex, we have plenty. Yeah, first smell that. Is that like an extra old Gouda? Oh, there's yeah. Gouda, and then there's Gouda. Try this now. This is raw milk. It's cow's wow. milk. It has a beautiful nutty flavor. And it's kind of butterscotchy, mm, yeah, mm -hmm. nutty. It's super salty. You can see the kind of salt grains mm -hmm. and the amino acids cr crystallizing too. What's, what do you got there? Touch them, squeeze them, smell them, they kiss like them, whatever you want to do. A little chevy shoe or croutin. Croutin, yeah. Awesome. And this is 100% farmhouse mm -hmm. raw goat's milk from the Loire Valley in France. This, this is perfect. Right. With, with this, this it's, I love this. It's because like the pungency of the goat cheese, and then it has like that little saltiness, bitterness at the yeah, end. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so we were looking uh, for a third cheese to like round out our sure. uh, our cheese poofs. And we, uh, we, uh, off the top of our head, we were looking for like a gorgonzola, something with like a blue mold in it. Cabrales. Cabrales. Sounds like a boxer, but yeah. blue cheese. Yeah. Goat, sheep, and cow's milk. This is one of two blue cheeses on the planet, which are naturally blue vein. How do you naturally blue vein a cheese? It started off like this. And this guy, you know, in France, left this wheel entirety and forgot about it for like a year, a year and a half, came back, and it was blue. 
That's how blue cheese was made. You shouldn't always be on top of everything 100% because then you'll never have blue cheese. Th this yeah. is one of the greatest mistakes in the history of time, if you right. ask me. And it's uh, covered in grape leaves? Yeah, it's grape leaves. Th those grape leaves wow. were dipped in brandy. Mm -hmm. I love the mixture of the creaminess and the bitterness. It's awesome. I love the way the Spanish think. Oh, yeah. It's, God bless them. One of the things that I like about what you've done by choosing the cheeses is you set us up for experiencing some pretty good wines, too. Shall we wrap up yeah. the rest of the cheese? Please, okay. Go. We picked three really great cheeses to make our cheese puff with. The basic idea being that we want to get the flavor of a cheese as luscious as this into the shape of this to make our own cheese puffs. So we just got to get started, right? We're trying to crack the code on the ubiquitous, delicious cheese puff. This is the vehicle, the corn puff. How do you make it? What's the right texture? What's the right balance of the batter? Micah is working on the cheese dust, a whole other conversation. And then we got to figure out how to marry the two so that we have a corn puff to remember. With that much overspray, we're going to lose most of our crotin on the ground. Yeah, and plus it didn't coat the uh, corn puff too evenly. So the cyclone is probably the way to go yeah. because we can contain it and recycle the powder. Yeah, yeah. sure. In a way, we've got the crotin, which is aged to a state where it can just be pulverized, right? Right. And, and this look at this like a total fine particle dust. This worked really well. And then we've got the gouda, mm -hmm. that the, the really old gouda that's also gonna buzz probably pretty well. Look look at that. Look at that. It's sticking. I got the cheese puff problem. Yeah. Which is a good sign. There's one more cheese that we haven't checked on. The cabrale. Yeah, the cabrales. This got pretty dry. I mean this this would probably crumble. Look at that. Well, do you think it'll pulverize? I think so. We could get a little more complex. We could add like a hint of onion, yeah, a little yeah. bit of parsley, a little, like for the, for the cabrales, which is Spanish, we could put a little bit of smoked Spanish paprika in there. Mm. Check out these beauties. Look at this pepper, these hot peppers. Nice. Right. So I figured that can go with the Spanish theme. We got garlic, onion. Let's finish with the chopping of vegetables so that we can dehydrate it, and then we can get to making the batter. Let's make the batter. batter. Let's make the batter, yeah. All purpose, yeah. Let's bring it all over. Get a starch. Martin, you were you were researching the shrimp chip formula. Yeah. So you're taking the Singapore tapioca formula, mm -hmm. and you're thinking that maybe if we try it with a corn North American model, it mm -hmm. might work. So yeah. Instead of tapioca flour, we use corn flour with a lot of corn starch in it. Yeah. So from what I understand from the recipe, what you do is you take tapioca flour. That's black pepper. And then here's a bit of salt too. Martin's. Yeah. Tapioca flour has a lot of starch in it. Yes. The theory... It's pretty much all starch. So the theory is that's what puffs. Yeah. You gotta check this out. Starch and water do the weirdest things. Whoa. Right. Oh, it's totally yeah. gluty. Uh, the steamer's ready to go. Like yes. It's working. So I'm gonna put the uh, starchy tapioca dough into the steamer okay. and cook it for 45 minutes. 45 minutes? Okay. Yeah. Should we so. simultaneously work on a corn one that, that mimics the lessons we learned from the tapioca one? We yeah. may as well. So this is for our corn puffs, cheese puff vehicle. Let's do a double batch for our experimentation. Okay, so should so we do... Um, three pounds. Like Sorry, three cups. Six cups. Six cups. And then two cups of starch. We're doing three quarters corn flour to a quarter potato flour. Six times three quarters, quarters. is what? Is, um, oh, one and a half, one and a half. Should we work so it six. out? It's six. No. <laughs> it is. Oh, we've never taken it to this step. <laughs> And then two over four is the same as one half. One half, right? right? So four, I was so right. You four get and a half. Four and a half. So it's not it's not six cups. No, no, I know. That was okay. I was for something else. All right, cool. So, okay, so we've got a quarter cup of the potato starch. Yeah, our commercial. So an eighth cup of rice flour. Eighth cup? Eighth cup. All right. And then this is the corn starch. A corn starch and just an eighth cup. Yeah. Anything else that we need to add? Baking powder? This is a tablespoon. Yeah, I'd say just one of those tablespoons. And we'll need a delivery vehicle to get it into the deep fry oil. I can start making that caulking okay. gun. The idea being, just like caulking, you would put it into the, the caulking gun, the tube, right. and you just sort of squeeze it through. This is an extruder. Extruder, exactly. Right. We're trying to start. We're trying to start the whole parade. No, but how far are you from finishing your talking gun? I'm super close. Do you know where the files are? It should be hanging up. Come on! About three and then right two. Alright. Okay, so the talking gun is ready. Okay, should we load it up? This is the corn batter dough with about 50% starch. Stoop. This is the big moment. Yeah. yeah. Whoa! <laughs>
You're frying the end of your extruder. Oh yeah, that's right. You had to solder this. This is food grade, right? Should we just try it like this? Sure. Is that going to come flying off? Um, might. No, it won't. It won't come through. All right, go for it. <laughs> that's dramatic. Just don't knock the pot off the stove. You can, oh, under, under. Yeah, under the. Uh, there you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Keep it going. Extrude away, man. Keep extrude. Going. Extrude. Major yeah. extrude. Oh, jeez. Whoa. We're making cheese puffs at home. The only problem is the batter has been, I don't know how I say it, dangerous. really oh, dangerous, geez. exactly. But we think we've got the right plan. This time we can combine the yellow and white corn flour with the tapioca flour. And add the dried cheese. Yeah, and then the boiling water and salt like before, and then mix it up and knead it. And then we'll roll it into little logs, and then we'll steam those logs for 45 minutes. And slice them into really thin chips so they dry out. Yeah, dehydrate them. And then we'll fry them at really hot temperature, like 420 degrees Fahrenheit. Sounds mm -hmm. good. You gotta rock the uh, cyclone, man. Yeah, I'll continue working on it. Um, there's this lid we got at the hardware store. The cheese puffs and the cheese dust will get mixed in line. And then as they make their way through the cyclone, the cheese puffs and the cheese dust will get mixed together and then settle it out in the bottom at this giant pile. And then we'll just have to mechanically separate the two of them. Maybe what we could do is we could use the white cheese poofs that we have, the unseasoned ones, introduce orange powder, and then do a test and see if they actually coat. Sure. Yeah. See, by completely doing something different, we have momentum again. Micah, this is our last hope, eh? What you're doing for the cheese puff? I'm doing exactly what Chris did, plus a little bit of corn flour. No pressure, I obviously. To you later on. You to today. All right, I think it's sealed. I shouldn't tape it on the inside, should I? Yep. On the inside as well? Yeah, probably. I'm sure packing tape is food grade. This is organic packing tape. This is the hopper for the cheese uh, poops. And then this is the cheese inlet. So we have like a, a bowl of powdered cheese that we self-serve. And then they may actually meet right at the 90 degree angle. <laughs> so we can test this apparatus as yeah. well as the cyclone right now. Right All right, let's, yeah. let's do it. Yeah. The theory is that the air will just flow through the pillowcase. Turn the vacuum on. Okay, ready? Okay, so okay, it's airtight. Right. That's good. Yeah, it's good tight. Maybe it's, it's too good. airtight. It's good and airtight. Um, okay. You know what we need to do is we need to reinforce it with uh, spanners this way so it resists All right. torquing. Like two by twos? Yeah. Here's one. All right. All right. So after reinforcement, these are solid. Let's try it out yeah. again. All right, go for it. Again. Oh, yeah. All yeah. right. Oh, look at that. They're changing color. Great. All right. Totally works. Yeah. yeah. Saves oh, us hours of work. Hours of work. It's so convenient. What we have to do is wait for our new cheese puff dough to uh, dehydrate. Right. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow, we, uh, we fry them up. The tea. We put them together. Yeah. And then we're ready to go. Let's get finished and let's get out of here. Let's check out how they dehydrate the, yeah. the dough. That's how they get a translucent. They're pretty oily still. They're dry though inside. Look at that. So it actually worked to just to slice them thinner. Hopefully they'll puff out really nicely. Yeah, we It'll don't be know. be a great vehicle for the cheese dust, which we still have to make. We've got a whole bunch of stuff that we dehydrated. The garlic, yeah. the peppers. So we might as well start making our cheese dust flavors from the three cheeses we bought. The aged Gouda. This is the finely sifted Cotin. Okay, so this is the Cabralis right here. Is that the garlic? Yeah, it's the garlic. This is the uh, the onions, right? Yeah. It smells like a killer bagel. Mm. Yeah. yeah. The hot pepper. It smells like uh, pepperoni. Oh, we're ready to go. Ready yeah. to make the goat crottin cheese dust. Garlic, garlic. garlic wouldn't be terrible. Onion it brings a, a little bit of sweetness. I say the onions. I say the onions too. It's smelling pretty good. It's pretty good. Let's not even talk about it. Good. Next one, shall we do the gouda? Oh man, cumin. Perfect. Oh, I like the mopping. Mop, mop, gouda and cumin. Mm. The cumin yeah. was the first thing I tasted. Mm. It's awesome. It kind of aged in my mouth. The last one. The like, capralis. This, the this, capralis. Is the, this is the capralis. serious challenge, I think. Why do I say capralis? I, I keep on saying cabriolet. 
still has that buttery, buttery smell. Let's do the rest of the onion. I've never sucked blue cheese dust off my fingers before. Guys, I'm gonna suggest putting a tiny bit of garlic in there too. <clears throat> yeah, sure. So how about let's do smoke, a little bit of smoked paprika. Okay, so we have the dehydrated onions, dehydrated garlic, paprika, and the uh, dried cabrales. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Oh man. <laughs> oh, man. That's like a complete meal. This is the visual representation of all that we made. So this is the entire uh, yield of our so-called puff chips, chunkies. 380. Perfect. All right. On the nose. Chunkies. Okay. The first chunky. First chunky. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Puffing yeah. Puffing. Up. Puffing. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see if it's cooked in the middle. Oh, this is a crunch. Chip. Wow, look, look at that. that. That's oh, awesome. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. I can't believe yeah. we got All it. Right. All right. We have an uncanny ability to get something right when we have no other options. Do you think that the cheeses will stick to the... The puffs? I'm just worried about how shiny they are. We talked about before about doing a little paint job of some oil. Just before we throw them into the hopper. What's that oil over there, Martin? Canola. Canola. Let's just try it Let's as a test. It, yeah. Let's just see. It's a beautiful brush. Oh, yeah. It absorbs it really well. <laughs> just throw it in. Check Pull it out. out. It. You are about to taste the first ever Chunkies. What was it like? Well, Talk us through it. The sound, like the hard sound of the dense cracker or the dense puff kind of just makes you forget about all the flavors. But then the cumin just sideswiped me. Nice. And then I was, it was like being fuzzed out with, with a Gouda blanket. Hey, check it out. These are going to be our Cartana right. cheese puffs. How's the mix ratio? Yeah, they're getting coated. Yeah, you're simulating. Yeah. Yay. So on to number two. Okay, so that's the Dutch human Gouda. Cabral uh, This is the last one. Carry the lights. There we go. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've just given birth to a new type of gourmet cheese puff called the Chunkies. We're now heading to a restaurant to finally taste them, where they're going to be paired with wine specifically chosen for each Chunkies. I've never met a guest that I couldn't find a wine that exactly meets their palate. Well, we're curious to know what you would like to pair with our goat crottin Spanish onion Chunkies. I picked um, a Pinot Noir from Chile, and as soon as you taste this Pinot Noir, you're going to start salivating. Can we start with a little toast to our Chunkies? <laughs> yeah, yes. totally. Thank you so, Thank much. You so much. Cheers. Cheers to Chunkies. Cheers. <laughs> the snack has really nice acidity, sourness to it, and it's got the cheesy elements to it, and it's got a little bit of that, I call it kind of herbal, grassy character, and that's a great pairing with a nice high acidity Pinot like this. The Pinot after the cheese kind of came to life too. I could recognize that, that Pinot Noir kind of earthy, you know, wide taste. Next one we're going to do is the Gouda. Yeah. Okay, this so this is our second one. And we're smelling some serious cumin, for the buttery. The raw milk Gouda. taste it first? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Really nice and salty and tangy. I'm getting a little bit of a lime taste almost. It's, it's, got, it's got acidity, it's got the, saltiness to it. Yeah but it's got a little bit of creaminess mm -hmm. to it. I love that there's the cumin one. in this because this is gonna pair really well with this one. Chateau Roson d'Espange, this is a Man. Bordeaux, and it's got really lovely, viscous character. I mean, look at the legs coming down the side of the it's glass. Incredible. There's, there's some fine yeah. legs. Yeah. This is baboom. You can't use the term legs anymore because it's sexist. You have to use tears. But this is sexy. <laughs> this is a very sexy one. You can't yeah, use we all legs. have legs, right? <laughs> it kind of swarms the Gouda. We're on to our final chunkies, the Cabrales. 
We're leaving uh, Holland and we're going to Spain. This is probably the most mysterious one out of all of them. Yeah. Mm. I've never tasted anything like that before. The blue part of the cheese does come through. It's a crawler for me. It's just like <laughs> on a four-legged animal, just like just lurking. So this wine comes from the Veneto region, and always, always the Amarone is 15 plus degrees in alcohol. So this one's great. Yeah, I mean, even just look at the color of it. Like really I can't dark. even see the bottom of yeah. my plate. Yeah, I know. It's, it's so intense. deep. The garlic is there. Yeah, it's, it's subtle though. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Subtle. I'm glad you think so. I notice the spittoons are immaculately clean. We didn't yeah, want well. you to have to wash them. I see, you're so considerate. Yeah. We'll help you uh, wash the glasses, too. Yeah. Cheers, yeah. Thank, you you thank you so much. Fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have to ask you a question later. Mm. Did you ever find that, it, you know, like the cheese on the fingers, you know, it's just like... The residue. The residue the was a bit of a problem. Like, would that, you like to eat them with, like, chopsticks or like that? <laughs> it's, a, it's a technical problem that we're concerned about. Okay. Hopefully we're developing a way of eating these things without having the cheese stick to your hands. Thank you.